Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid, and this is the 2001 BMW X5, the E53. And unfortunately, I believe the transfer case is is kaput, is not good. We think it's the chain. We're hoping it's not the splines on uh, the driven gear or the drive gear. Um, we're gonna demonstrate what happened. Basically, uh, the vehicle was being driven in traffic, stepped on the gas, and then nothing. Clink, 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 clink. There's a loud noise that's happening whenever you put it into gear, and we're gonna demonstrate what that is in a second. So let's, uh, let's check that out. Okay, go ahead, put it into gear briefly, and then take it out. Okay, turn it off. And basically that sound is what it sounds like when your transfer case goes. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the transfer case from the vehicle right now. And we just so happened to luck out and there is an X5 in a junkyard in Ontario. We're in the San Fernando Valley. It's over an hour away, but who cares? We're gonna go, we're gonna, hopefully, if we just need a chain, we can buy, we're gonna buy that chain because it's only $75 and you're gonna get a better chain than the chain that the vehicle came with. But if it's not the chain, if it's the, 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 the driven gear, if the splines on the driven gear, we need to go to the junkyard and get a new transfer case. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay guys, so several things changed during the course of this video. I, I decided just not to film everything step by step. I'm breaking my rule, I'm doing one of those, okay, I've done everything and I'm just gonna point out and, and show you what I've done just because uh, the, the, this was just the way it happened I, and I apologize for that. But anyway, as you can see, we took out uh, the middle section of the exhaust, okay? These are the two catalytic converters and we've unplugged the pre and post oxygen sensors. They just clip into little brackets, you can unplug them. Obviously we've moved, we've removed these two hanger brackets and then these two hanger brackets as well. And then um, we also unbolted the, uh, the exhaust in, in the back, but we left it in place. Okay, you can see it down there. We, cut, we, we unbolted the hanger so that we had a little bit of room to kind of move it back. That way we had some room to, to drop the fronts of these down um, out of the engine. And then we, we actually, we finally had room to get a wrench onto the back of the bolts that were holding this, that was, they were holding this section onto that section back there. And I used my, uh, my impact uh, ratchet to just basically get those off. And, and these were very tough to get off. They, they didn't want to come off. So uh, just FYI, if you're gonna, if you don't have an impact ratchet, you know, you might end up uh, just removing the whole entire exhaust. The reason we didn't remove the whole entire exhaust, by the way, is because you have to remove the bumper in order to get it off. That is the, that's the big pain because right here, basically there's just not, there wasn't enough room for these, for, for the, the back mufflers to actually come out. There's uh, there's the frame of the car right there. So there's just not enough room to actually pull them forward so that they clear the bumper right here. So that's the problem. You would have to actually, let's wait for the plane. Yeah, so that's the problem. Basically, you'd you know you'd have to take the bumper off if you need if you wanted the clearance to just drop the whole exhaust together. So definitely doable. You know these are the these are the brackets for the the, the, the rear of the exhaust right there. So that was step one. Then step two was we let's see at this point I think I'm gonna need to get under the car. Step two was to disconnect. The drive shaft. You only need to disconnect three of the bolts. Three of the bolts hold the drive shaft onto the. This is the rear drive shaft. Hold the drive shaft onto the the transfer case. And uh, this this right here, this rubber thing is called a guibo. It's a it's rubber, right? And it you know it just cushions the whole uh, the drive axles. Went from you know their connections to the each, like you know wherever they connect up to the to the transfer case to the differential. So as you can see, I've left three of the bolts on. They're holding the rubber piece to the to the, the the rear axle, so I only disconnected these three, which hold it onto, which connected to the uh, to that right there, the 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 shaft coming out of the transfer case. So that was step two. We also kind of briefly unbolted this this uh, bracket right here in order to let the drive shaft bend downward so that I can pull it back off of, I could pull it actually off of the uh, the transfer case, and then I kind of just 
put the bracket back in place and put the bolt threaded the bolts back on a little bit just to kind of hold it there and then as you can see we've got it wired up right here we've just kind of got it wired to these bolts which those bolts are for the uh the um hanger bracket which actually holds the transfer case and the transmission up to the frame of the car once you actually remove that you know you basically need to jack your transmission up at that point use a wood block like this you need to jack up the transmission and at the end we actually needed to to we ended up moving the jack and using it for something else so we just put a jack stand under the transmission when we had it there but i'll come back to that and uh and then you can proceed to remove uh all the e-torix uh bolts that hold the transfer case onto the transmission now these are the these are the e-torix right now i didn't ha i only had a a, a a set of deep e-torix sockets and you can't use those to do this there's just you don't have the clearance now um, i started to use a 10 millimeter wrench because you know i mostly use rent, uh, uh, metric i mean this is a bmw it's it's pretty much all metric but a 10 millimeter wrench of any kind is is kind of a loose fit for the for an um an e10 and it turns out that a 3 8 inch uh wrench is a much tighter fit for for a uh an e12 by the way but even still do not use a 3 8 inch wrench to 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 you to go on these bolts because we messed up two of them okay while we were doing this I think, uh, I mean, you can see the splines on that one are kind of kind of jacked up. This was also one of the ones, you can see how they've, they've just been getting messed up, right? So what we needed to do was we needed to use the proper socket from the get-go. And it's very difficult because you don't have a lot of room on the transfer case to, to, to get stuff on there. And, and ultimately, we actually ended up breaking off one of the bolts. See right here, we ended up breaking off, off this one in the transmission and you know we're gonna need to we're gonna need to drill it and use an easy out or drill it and tap it or do something um it's it's really not going to be fun to repair that but use the proper tool i mean look at look at the white junk that was that was on these bolts i mean it's it, it only had a hundred thousand miles but these bolts really were stubborn these ended up being the, the the hardest part of the job or or almost the hardest part of the job i'll take a couple of these bolts and i'll show you so you have the space on the top of the transfer case to actually get those bolts off. And I use my, my impact to kind of get those off. I, I probably wouldn't recommend using that to crack it if you don't have to. I mean, you're gonna need to use your impact on the top ones, probably, which, which is why I recommend using the right tool. Um, I, I used a swivel socket also on a swivel impact socket. Um, you, you might also be able to use some wobble extensions. You can see that you can't quite get straight on to uh to these bolts like you can kind of get straight on to that one that but you can see there's something in the way on that one and then look at that one over there this is way in the way so it's at an angle down like that so you definitely need a swivel if you're going to crack it with sockets or um again you could try that three eighths inch wrench but i i do not recommend it at all so um there's enough clearance here to get you know a short a short socket and uh and uh and just a, a ratchet on there just to crack it at least but what i did was i cracked the bolts with uh with the socket and once i had them cracked loose i used the 3 8 inch wrench to you know to get them off all the, the rest of the way that's how i did it and that that pretty much worked and you can see that there's even less clearance on the bottom here especially like you know between the mount right here when you've got the bolt on there and you've got your socket and you know your socket sticking out to here the ratchets back to here if you know if you back this out somewhat you know a little little too far you can't even get your your socket off of the bolt at all you can't you can't get it all the way off so that's why you you can only crack it free and then use your use a wrench to get the rest of the way and then I also want to point out that there are two sleeves right here okay and so these are the prying these are the points that you really need to pry against this thing was a, a bear to get out it did not want to come out at all and uh, we've been struggling with this for like half an hour trying to get it out wondering what the hell we're doing wrong and basically you just you got to get your you got to get some screwdrivers in here and you know 
make an opening, get a pry bar in there and pry and pry and pry and then get on the other side and pry. Concentrate on these two sleeves right here, which uh, right now we're looking at this thing upside down. This is the this is the the left the driver's side. That's is the front the front drive shaft is on the driver's side. So this is how it sits in the car. So uh, right on the top there and on the bottom there. So the bottom uh, right side and the top left side. Uh, that's where you got to pry against to get it out, and uh, eventually it comes out. Of course, we drained the oil before we before we removed it. So. There we go. And I don't know if we just saw this, but all this just came out of this hole as uh, as I was flipping this thing upside down. And I, I'm not quite sure yet, but um, you know, I'm thinking that maybe maybe the the uh, the maybe this is where some of the damage is. I'm I'm hoping that it's not. I'm not sure yet and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take this inside we're gonna crack it open and we're gonna hopefully see uh, we're, we're hopefully gonna see that we've got a damaged chain um, that's what I want to see because that's an easier fix than getting a whole new one of these from the junkyard uh, after doing this here in a backyard I really really don't want to do this in a junkyard because it's gonna be even more difficult without impact tools so anyway Okay guys, I am uh, back here in my workshop uh, later on tonight and um, just want to give you some notes on how to crack this thing open. I've removed all of the bolts from around the perimeter of the, uh, of the, the transfer case, first of all. And the thing did not want to pry apart at all. It was very, very, very tight on there together. And, you know, there's, there's just really no, no room to cut. You can't, you can't bang it off. It's, it's difficult to bang it off at the very least. But anyway. Um, there is a little there is a little notch over here on this side right here And what I ended up doing is stick in a big, you know biggest screwdriver. I had right in there and, and Well, I took uh, I took Thor here and whacked it a couple times and boom it popped apart So that is the part that comes off right there and uh, I'm, I'm happy to report that there are no broken gears on the inside um, be aware that uh, there's a little spacer here. It doesn't matter if it's turned upside down or not. And then there's a little uh, there's a little roller roller bearing in here. So those are the those are the parts there, and none of the splines are broken. The chain is very is pretty loose. So we're probably going to end up uh, we would probably end up changing this um, anyway. However, here's what I think the damage is. This is the side that mates to the transmission. And so this is where the front uh, drive shaft goes. And when I first pulled this off the vehicle, um, a lot of metal filings fell out of here, and I, I kind of knew at that point. But let's uh, let's zoom in. So you can see that the the inner surface of this gear is just completely worn. And all those metal filings just kind of fell out of there when I when I took the transfer case off, and this this corresponds to the grinding that we heard when we put it in gear. And the reason this happened is because when you put the uh, transfer case in gear, it's now engaged both of the drive shafts basically. And the thing that keeps it keeps them from turning at all is you've got your foot on the brake until you let it go, and you know the drive shafts drive shafts start to turn and you start to move. So uh, with this, uh, with this, uh, the, the teeth on these gear completely gone, this gear in here wants to turn because the engine's moving, everything's engaged, and this gear wants to turn, but everything was stripped, and so that was the grinding that we were hearing. So unfortunately, we have to get a new transfer case, which means that we're going to have to do everything that uh, we just did today. We're going to have to go out to the Ontario junkyard and do it again and hope that there is a transfer case there, and honestly, probably a new uh, uh, front uh, drive axle as well. Probably going to need to take both of those things. But hey, at least we we know how to do it, and uh, we're hoping it'll be a lot easier the second time. So here is the transfer case we got from Ontario, and I've already cracked it open as we saw before. It was actually, um, it is actually pretty dirty inside. There is, um, 
there's kind of crud on the inside of the gears right here and I believe what that actually is is excess um, RTV uh, this transfer case has a date of 103107 and the vehicle we took it off of was a, a 2000 so this had already been uh, replaced once before and he actually had a towing package on his vehicle which we also grabbed and I, I'm surmising that that's maybe why uh, why he replaced his, his transfer case once before. Seems like these are kind of the weak point of the vehicle, or one of the weak points of the vehicle. But anyway, um, I would say probably not to use too much excessive uh, RTV on these things when you do put them back together. And keep in mind that, um, his oil is pretty black also, but keep in mind that when it's sitting on the vehicle, it's sitting like this, right? So the level of the oil is sort of, it's basically right here. It's kind of level with right here. So the most critical spots for the RTV are going to be along this half here, along the bottom, around here. And so those are kind of where you want to concentrate the RTV. And around here doesn't matter as much. I mean, it's not going to throw RTV out from the top. It's just, you know, you're just concerned about the oil. Le I mean, it's not going to throw, um, not going to throw ATF fluid because that's what you fill it with. You fill it with Dextron 3. Um, it's not going to throw the ATF off, you know, out through the top. It's just going to, if it's going to leak from anywhere, it's going to leak from the bottom. So that's where I would concentrate the RTV, or I'm, that's where I'm going to anyway, when I get it back together. But anyway, this is the part that I'm after. I need to get this out of here. And the way we do that is, I'm going to do this uh, left-handed just because of where the camera is, but I'm just using these uh, lock ring pliers. These are circlet pliers, actually. Just make things a little easier. You don't absolutely have to. If you have two people, you can. This is not a very strong. Uh, this is not a very strong spring right here. You know, you can actually kind of. You can bend it apart with even one hand, with one hand even, and probably try to hit it. But just to make it easier, just because I have the tool, I'm going to use it. One easy way to get the chain off, by the way, this is kind of loose. This doesn't, you know, this doesn't do anything. It's not attached to anything, so that's an easy way. You don't have to actually remove this gear in order to change your chain. Actually, you might, just considering the fact that there are some tight tolerances in here. No. So, you don't have to remove this gear to change your chain. And I don't want to keep whacking the metal. You know, there's a lot of uh, sort of rust or, I mean, that's kind of what it is. Rust and corrosion. It's kind of falling out of here. And that, that definitely fell out of, uh, out of, our other one that we took off the vehicle and I guess that's just that's just what happens to the splines on these things I mean I don't know what to say about it other than it seems troubling and uh, I guess these things it, it says to me that these things kinda have a limited life hey this was a this is a very cheap fix for us I think this probably cost this, this whole thing with the, the transfer case and the axle after taxes and fees and all that stuff, it was probably 200 bucks. So, a lot better than like three or four grand. This is the old one, the one from our car. This is the newer one, the one from the junkyard from 07. Now listen to the bearings here. And this bearing. This one's a little loose at this point. It's a little noisier. So, I think even though uh, this one, the, the 07 one, is a little kind of dirtier inside, the dirty is really just particles of RTV, which I can clean out. I think I'm gonna basically use this one, even though I just uh, knocked the, the good gear out of it. 
I think I'm going to put it back in. It's okay. I needed to do this anyway because I'm changing the chain because I I bought a new chain. Um, there are two other videos on YouTube already on how to change the chain. This is that basically is what you do is you knock that gear out and and you change the chain. And those videos show you know how how the chain gets you know loose and a new chain is is a lot tighter. I will show that once I've got everything put back together. But basically, uh, I'm just going to proceed to clean this thing out and change over this, put this new chain in there. Um, the new chain is in, uh, it is a Borg Warner HV059. And so that's the chain you need to get. It's the one with the one blue link on it right there. And that corresponds to the, the one blue link on the old chain right there. So that's what I'm going to do. First I'm going to clean that up. I don't think we need to watch a video on that and then I'll install the chain. I just put together the old one and here's here's the chain tension on the old one. And basically the, the chain stretches and eventually it's going to start to skip one of the cogs, one of the links here. So <clears throat> uh, that's why you should change it. To clean up the mating surfaces here I'm just using a little bit of uh, ultra fine steel wool that will not mar the surface at all. Okay, I've got things about as cleaned up as I'm gonna get them. Um, I know it doesn't look that way, but this is all just kind of like slag from the casting process. For some reason, this case was just a little, little dirtier on the inside and, and a little, little un, unpolished, but oh well. It's, uh, it's not coming off, it's not chipping off, so it's fine. This bearing's fine. This is that gear that I had just hammering out before that I've now decided I'm keeping so I'm gonna basically just slot it back in and it's actually easier to get it in and out once you have it out the first time so really not that big a deal in fact I can probably spread the lock ring with my hand if I really needed to and just kind of just kind of get the bearing I mean, it was easier to do this yeah once you kind of have it aligned it just kind of pops down into place Okay, and you get the lock ring sort of in its groove, properly in its groove so that the lock ring is sort of, uh, so it's moving back and forth. You can see it in the groove right there. So I've got the new chain here and what I'm going to do while I've still got it in the bag is I'm going to pour a little bit of ATF over it. That's what goes in the transfer case, by the way, is just plain old Dexron 3 ATF. And I'm just kind of going to get it coated, slather. I want to make sure that like every link is just good, you know. It's kind of like a bicycle chain. You want to make sure the whole thing is just oiled. And it's going to be dipping through oil and mixing around, but I figure, you know, why not get it pre-lubed just to make sure. Probably unnecessary, but I'm doing it. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. I'm just kind of slipping the new chain down in. The hardest place to get it through is on the side there, but you can just you can slip it through. Okay. Here's the gear. I'm actually removing the inner parts. There's the there's that little um, washer and then the ring gear. So kind of setting those aside just in case they fall out or whatever but basically this is the inner surface that goes that slots in and you just kind of get it on the chain okay. and you should be able to actually because this is such a new chain I might not even be able to do it this way so you're able to get that old chain out of there because it's so loose, but because I was kind of afraid of this, because the new one is so new, I think I'm gonna need to pop this up out first. So I'm gonna have to kind of lay these two things down in at the same time, because if if they're off center, if one is like this, then they're not gonna they're not gonna slip down into their machine into the into the slots they're supposed to go into because those are machine surfaces and they're very tight tolerances. So there's not much slack. See that popped in. And let's see if this one, oh. This one might just pop in for me. Yeah, I think I'm in. 
and boom. Popped in, lock rings in place. So a lot more tension there. So now that thing will never skip and hopefully will last the life of the vehicle. Well, let's hope, right? I'm gonna pop the ring gear back in there and the washer. And so that's the bottom half. Oh, actually, there's also, there's also this puppy, which the planetary gear, which I actually, I don't think I've fully cleaned yet. So that's that cleaned. And I'll pop it back over here. Like that. Probably should give it a little bit of ATF. Just use a little of that. It's my assembly lube for lack of uh, anything else. One other thing I want to point out is this. This is the magnet which collects, you know, just particles, uh, the shavings from the gears and, and whatnot. And so you can just kind of pull this thing out. It's, um, it's not a solid magnet. It's sort of like a, it's like what would be on the, on the back of a, a magnet, uh, on, like a refrigerator magnet or something. It's, it's really not that powerful. But that's what that is. You can pull it out and clean it off and pop it back in. So now I'm going to use gray RTV and run a small bead all the way around. Put that planetary gear back on. When you seat it down, you don't want it to go sideways and you don't want to smear it. You want it to just go straight down. Okay. There we go. Um, I noticed that there was corrosion on, on the bolts on the old one, and that's because uh, the, uh, the case is made out of aluminum. And so it's always a good idea to put just a little bit of anti-seize on, on bolts when you uh, put them into aluminum. I saw that they had used thread locker on these bolts, but um, I don't think that that's necessary. That wasn't on the original, so I think that whoever rebuilt this did that. It was blue thread locker. You could do that if you want to, but yeah, I really I don't see this thing vibrating off. I'm going to do a center working in a star pattern out towards the sides. Now, there's no torque specification for this that I could find anywhere, but um, I think just kind of use your good sense. Don't don't over crank these. And I'm just gonna leave it like that to cure for 24 hours. I want that RTV to be solid. Actually, one thing I'm forgetting is uh, this dust cap kind of goes on goes on this side over here. That seems like it's seated to me. So in case you really do want a torque, um, I'm gonna do 12 foot pounds because it seems like that's what I'm already at. Um, I've just kind of been doing some tests with my torque wrench and that's kind of what I'm at on a couple of these bolts and I'm just gonna make sure that all of them are there as well.
See, that one was a little loose over there. Interesting. That's why it's worth it to check. Especially if you use uh, what I use, electric impact, that is not super duper strong. I, I use there's a there's a reason I use the um, the Makita, actually, because again it's not super super strong. I've I've honestly I've never stripped any fasteners using this. I use this to run things down. It's super fast. It's got power to take things off, but I I know how to put things on with it and not do it in such a way that I'm going to damage anything. So. Uh, that's kind of why I use that and not, you know, one of your really super high torque ones that you're actually able to take wheel lug nuts off with. I'd love to have one of those like $500 beasts, but I'm actually glad I don't um, when it comes to just working on things. Anyway, 12 foot pounds seems good to me. What you want to see is you want, you want to tighten this thing down so that you're seeing the RTF squeeze out of the sides because that way you know you've compressed the RTV and you've, you've squeezed it over the surface of the, um, the over the mating surfaces. That's, that's, what you, that's where you want to get it. You don't want to get it tighter than that to where you're squeezing all of the RTV out completely, but we, we also want to get the bolts tight enough that they're not going to come loose. I'm going with 12 foot pounds. So here we go with uh, the transfer case back onto the transmission. Actually, I've already got the bracket back on to the transfer case as well, and the heat shield's reinstalled. Basically, I'm ready to put the exhaust back on. But I just wanted to point out that this was the uh, this was the bolt that we broke off. Um, a friend of mine actually came over with some bolt extractors and easy outs and stuff and tried to get it out, and, and there was just nothing doing. And you can actually see one of the the easy outs that was that's basically it's it was broken off when we were trying to twist it out so it got broken off inside the bolt after we drilled through the bolt and uh basically that means that bolt ain't coming out it's staying in there because you can't drill through an easy out it's hardened steel so you can't drill through a drill bit with another drill bit so um that's staying in and honestly i don't think it really matters very much um there are what, there are nine bolts total, so there are eight other ones in here, and uh, I, I do think it's just fine. And um, what torque did I use? Um, I made them hand tight, or kind of as tight as I, as, as I could, and then I tested with a torque wrench, and I was at least 33 foot-pounds on everything, so I just made sure everything else was 33 foot-pounds. And So if you want a torque, that is the torque to use. And with the rest of it, I just, you know, I use my impact to just get it all tight. And uh, that's what I did. Anyway, um, I'm not going to show the rest of the, I mean, I'm not going to show the reinstallation of the, the mufflers because if you took them out, you can get them back in. It's actually, it's, it's all pretty simple. However, I will give you a really nice ending to this video. So I realized that I could try something before I put the mufflers back on. Anyway, um, I'm going to put the mufflers back on, button this whole thing up, and that'll be the end of this project. Hope I helped you out, and uh, thanks for watching.